Okay, June 2008, question 7, the mechanics paper. Here we have a package lying on an inclined plane, and a diagram as shown here. And important point to note, the package is held in equilibrium. So, well, first of all, let's um, label our diagram with all the relevant forces. So, we've got the weight of the object acting down. If it's 4 kilograms, that's 4G acting straight down. It's a rough plane. Oh, let's, let's do the reaction force. So, perpendicular to the plane at exactly 90 degrees, there is the normal reaction force. Let's call that R. Uh, and opposing the motion, so the, the the package is in equilibrium, it's on the point of moving up the plane, so it's just about to move in this direction. That means that the friction, FR, must be acting opposing that motion, so the friction must just be holding it there. Okay, so we've got R and friction acting uh, perpendicular and parallel to the plane, respectively. Um, we've got this annoying 4G acting straight down, which is acting an angle away from that, and we've got the 45 degrees. So let's um, draw a couple of force triangles just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. So if that is parallel to the reaction or perpendicular to the plane, and this along here is parallel to the plane here, we can make a nice force triangle with the 4G as our hypotenuse. So let's draw that straight down. And then that's the parallel to the plane, that's perpendicular. So we can break the 4G into its components. So the hypotenuse 4G, it's a right angle triangle. You know this angle up in here is 30 degrees. If you're not sure, take a little bit of time to think about that. It's to do with the z angles and also to do with this fact is 90 degrees. This angle here is always the same as this angle here. So that gives us 4G cosine 30 for the adjacent side and this gives us 4G sine at 30 degrees for the opposite side. We've also got our annoying 45 uh, Newtons acting down. So let's draw a uh, force triangle for that. So 45 degrees is acting like here. And then we can break that into a parallel component to the plane and a perpendicular component to the plane. Now I know my diagram's not perfect, but if this is the 45 Newtons acting down here and it's acting down and to the right, let's put that little arrow on there and let's put this one on vertically down here. We know that this angle in here is 50 degrees which gives us the adjacent 45 cosine 50 and over here it gives us 45 sine 50. So we've now got components which are all perpendicular and parallel to the plane. Now how I would proceed, I haven't written a question on here, and that's because I would actually resolve in both directions just to give us an idea of what's going on. So let's resolve um, first of all, let's resolve parallel to the plane. Let's resolve parallel to the plane. So, what do we get? Well, 45 cos 50 is actually pushing up the plane. So we've got 45 cosine 50. Then we've got a component. This component of weight is actually helping to put it down the plane. So it's minus... 4G sine 30 is doing that. There's also friction opposing the motion up the plane and it's equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. Let's label that equation number one. If we resolve parallel to um, perpendicular to the plane, we've got R acting straight up, we've got this component of the 45 acting below the plane because it's pushing it into the plane. So it's minus 45. Um, my apologies. Yeah, no, minus 45. It's this component here. 45 sine 50. And we've also got 
um, minus a component of weight, which is this component of weight here, which is this one, 4G cos 30. 4G cosine 30. Again, this is equal to 0, and let's call this equation 2. Just before we proceed, we need to remember something, that we don't know what the coefficient of friction is, and we also should know, because it's in a limit in equilibrium, so on the point of moving, F max or FR is equal to mu R. So the friction, the maximum value of friction, which R, FR will be, is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the reaction force. So we've not actually answered the question yet, but this is actually going to be really helpful for us to answer the questions, and you'll see why in just a sec. So if I take a copy of this, and let's move on to where the question is. Let's just paste these in. Okay, now, so we've just done all the hard work now, but we've not actually answered this. But we're going to see how easy these five marks are. We can see we want to find out the magnitude of the normal reaction. So we're going to look at the equation number two, this one here. And if we look at it through it, we look at it carefully, we've got one unknown here, and we've got this we can all calculate, and this we can all calculate. So, really, R is equal to 45 sine 30 which we can tap into our calculators, plus 4g cosine 30, which again we can tap into our calculators. So we can come up with r is equal to 68.42019577. So r is approximately equal to 68.4 newtons three significant figures. So this is the answer that we want. So you can see how easy this question is when we've got, um, once we've actually found these two equations, which we only found from the diagrams, once we've got these two things, actually picking the right one was very straightforward, and actually our calculator did all the work for us, and those five marks are already done. That's because you're going to get five marks uh, wrapped up in breaking into these components and setting this equation up properly. Okay, once that's done, the question's easy. Okay, so let's move on to the second and the final part of the question. Let's bring those equations across that we had before. Now we used this equation already, so I'm taking a wild guess that we're going to have to use this one, but let's see. We want to find the coefficient of friction. Well, to find the coefficient of friction, we know what R is. We need to know what friction is. So in order to find the friction, we're going to use this equation. So let's use 1. Using equation number 1, the friction is equal to 45 cosine 50. Again, take a little while just to check that you understand what I've done with the algebra. Minus 4g sine 30. Again, we can work out this is we can just tap it all into our calculators. We know that the g is 9.8 as, as it was before, and then we find out that the friction is equal to 9.3254424436. And you'll see why, if we were asked for the friction at this point, we could round it approximately equal to 9.33 newtons if we wanted. However, that's not our final answer. And this is why I've written this answer down, uh, and I wrote the full answer that's on the previous page. So now we've found out what friction is, this is a six-mark question, we can just use the friction, because we know it's its maximum value because it's in limited in equilibrium, it's equal to mu times r, which tells us easily that all we've got to do for mu is we've got to take our answer for friction and divide it by r. Now we've got this answer already in our calculator, which is good for us. So we just divide it by the whole answer, not the rounded answer, the whole answer for R. And we should get 0 0.136296348, which now we can round because we've used the full answers, which is approximately equal to 0 0.136 to three significant figures. Now there's no units of coefficient of friction, that's just 
fine arts as it is. Finish. <laughs>